So today I'm going to be going over the contents of your amps and vials kits and some of the basics surrounding um, amps and vials and your different needles and syringes that you have. Um, so I think the best place to start is uh, with a vial. So introducing a vial. Um, this is an example of a vial. This is just uh, 0.9, um, so it's normal saline. Um, sterile with the top still on. Um, and then we'll introduce an ampule as well. They come in, um, in your packages for good reason in um, bubble wrap because they are glass, so you don't want those to break. Um, so that is an ampule and that's a vial, just to start with the basics of what they're called. So um, if we were to go over uh, opening a vial and taking out solution, um, we'll do that now. Um, so we'll want to pick a couple different um, things out of our kit for that. Um, and we'll just start with the basic 3ml syringe. So um, you could look at the syringe itself and see that it holds 3 mLs, um, but a better way, a more consistent way of figuring out what each item is, is just by reading the back of it. So this one does say it's a 3 mL syringe, and you can see at that top there, the tip of the syringe, it's called, it's a lure lock system, so we'll go over that system as well. There are different styles of syringes in different amounts, um, as you probably could imagine. So this one, for example, is a 1 mL syringe. Um, and it's also a little bit different in that it's a slip tip syringe. So we'll do a, sort of a, a demo with the 3ml lure lock. We'll be using a blunt fill needle. Uh, it's red typically, but again, you'll just want to read the back to make sure. So blunt fill needle, um, it's a rather large gauge. It's an 18 gauge and it's a one and a half inch length. So it's quite long. And we'll talk about that, what that gauge and length mean in a minute and kind of show some, some diagrams there too. So if we were going to draw out of this um, vial, we'll want to open our blunt fill needle, being careful not to touch the end or the hub as you'll be, uh, you'll learn to fondly call it, of the needle um, because we do want that to remain sterile. So same with our syringe, we're going to remove our syringe and we're not going to touch the tip of our syringe or the hub of our needle and we're just going to connect the two. So you just lure lock them together, it's kind of a twist motion and you push at the same time. Don't have to do it too hard, um, you don't want anything to break, but you do want it securely on there so you're not having loose ends um, kind of flying around. And that's just garbage for now. So next we'll take an alcohol swab, um, have it ready, and we're gonna pop the top off of our vial. So that can just be done by sticking your nail underneath or I like to kind of push my thumb underneath and you can, you'll hear it crack like that and you'll just lift it off. Um, and they, they are um, said to be sterile under here, but it's not a guarantee. So it's best to always clean this um, rubber stopper um, of your vial first. And so you wanna do that um, in a circular motion, putting a bit of pressure on there and really, really cleaning that, that top there. Um, you wanna make sure that you're not inadvertently getting any uh, microorganisms into your syringe that eventually you'll inject into your patient. So do a really good clean of that 30 seconds um, and you're gonna wanna let that dry as well. So really good um, clean with alcohol. Um, so next, say we wanna take out two mLs um, of our normal saline solution. So before we just go ahead and inject into our vial, we're gonna actually wanna inject some air into it. So this helps um, offset the vacuum in there. The reason uh, for the blunt fill is if this was a viscous solution, um, it kind of helps it draw it through because it's a larger gauge again. Um, and also it prevents um, blunting, unnecessary blunting of your injection needle. So we will change this blunt fill eventually to an injection needle um, once we have our fluid in the syringe. So take the cap off, place it in front of me. Um, it's good to sort of stabilize your hands, especially at first when you're getting used to this. Again, we're not gonna touch the needle of our um, blunt fill that we wanna remain sterile. Um, we're gonna make an effort not to touch the hub here or the tip of our syringe. We'll just go over the anatomy maybe um, quickly. 
of the syringe as well. And so we always want to recap it using the scoop method and then pressing it, this table is kind of thin, on a table to, to close it. Um, so this is our plunger. And I think you kind of saw me do it. I just go right to it. You want to actually move that plunger around a little bit um, when you first open a syringe because it can be a little bit stiff or sticky when you first open it. So look at your um, measurement markings, your ML markings, so that you familiarize yourself with them. Um, in our case, we want to go to two. So we're going to look at that top line of the plunger, just like with the oral syringes, that top line of the plunger there, we want to line that up exactly with the two where we want it. Um, and so now we're going to go ahead and uh, inject that air into the, into the vial. So I'm going to, I'd like to stabilize sort of on the desk um, or the surface that I'm using. And you want to make an effort to puncture it right in the center of that rubber stopper. If you go along the side, it's just a little bit awkward. Um, and sometimes you need to re-enter it, especially if it's a multi-dose vial or multi-use vial. Um, you want to kind of keep it consistent where you're poking it. So we're going to inject that air. And we're going to let the fluid uh, fill in the syringe via um, gravity or its, its pressure in the system. You do eventually pull back on the plunger and it, um, to help it come out a little bit too. So we're going to pull back. And you see some air bubbles. There's an air bubble here. There's one at the top there. That one at the top I can easily push back up, put back into the um, vial and pull back. There's still that one down at the bottom, which we will get rid of right away. So because of that um, air bubble at the bottom, I'm going to take out a little bit of excess. Um, and we're going to uh, show you some techniques to get this out. Um, but you do want a little bit of excess to uh, count for that, that bubble there. Another thing worth noting, it seems maybe obvious, but you need to and want to make sure that you're needle your blunt fill is in your solution because otherwise if I'm not sure if you can see but you could just be drawing out air if you're out of the um, actual liquid then you're just drawing out air and you're going to get bubbles just like that so you want to keep it in the solution um, and again not touching that part of the um, the needle uh, as best you can there um, so we'll get we're a little bit past two now we're going to take it out of our um, vial. We're going to recap. Anytime you're um, going to be doing something with a needle, you don't want a needle just kind of out in the open. Uh, so actually, if you use the back part of a pen and go directly to where the bubble is and whack it pretty hard with a wrist flicking type motion, you usually can get rid of those bubbles. So just like that. So now I have no bubbles. I do have a little bit of air at the top. Um, and I'm, that's an okay thing because what I actually want to do now is pull all my fluid out so that I know it's all within this syringe um, barrel and not within the needle at all. Now we're going to remove our blunt fill. So again, it's just that twisting motion and then this is going to go into our yellow sharps container when we're done with it. Um, and this is, again, we want to maintain sterility of that tip so we're not going to touch that. We're not going to put our... Um, syringe down on the table at this point. So I'm going to attach uh, an injection needle now um, just to keep it a closed system and sterile. So same idea when you're opening these, hang on to that bottom part, don't touch the hub of the needle, keep it capped, and you're gonna just do the twist motion on here. So um, for this injection needle, um, you're gonna want to push up all the way on your syringe or on your plunger and again, fill over top of the medication waste container to the, if we desired a 2 ml um, amount of medication or liquid, then that's what we're going to push the plunger up to. So we're at our 2 mls. Um, we're going to label this syringe now before we move on to the next uh, task. But actually what I want to show you is just the, the different injection needles that we would select from. Um, so we'll just grab this and this is will always be in the lab or some form of it um, but this kind of helps lay out the different gauges and lengths so when we get into the specific types of injection this is what we always want to be looking at and reading off of on our injection needles so you have a 20 gauge on this end of the spectrum and a 27 gauge on this end and if you can see there um, and we'll show you again in lab but that 20 gauge is pretty thick and that 27 gauge 
is actually quite nice and thin. So the gauge is referring to the thickness or the diameter of the, the needle itself. Um, so the unfortunately, it's not super intuitive, but a 20 gauge, so the smaller number um, corresponds with a thicker needle and a higher number for gauge corresponds with a thinner needle. Um, and as we get into the different types of injections, you'll know the parameters for selecting what gauge of needle um, for, what, um, for what type of injection. And then it gets into, so you have your gauge and then you have your length always next to that. So the 20 gauge is a one inch length. Um, this 21 gauge, so also still a pretty thick diameter, um, is a one and a half inch needle. So that's quite long. And I'll show you then a, I don't think we have a half inch on here, but we do have a five eighths. So you can see that that's quite short in comparison to that um, one and a half inch and that five eighths. So again, that is um, part of why and when you're selecting for specific types of injections, as you can probably start to imagine already, um, if you need to go deeper into muscle tissue, you're gonna want a longer needle, also dependent on the size of the patient. Um, and when you're just wanting to go to subcut tissue or adipose tissue, you don't need to go quite as deep. So a 5 8 or one half inch is appropriate. So this is just to sort of visually um, see and imagine the different gauges you can get. Um, there are many different types. Uh, I, I think sometimes people want to remember the color coding system. I strongly um, advise against that because that does change over time with different products and different types um, of products. So we'll just but what you would like or what we would like you to do always is note um, on the, the back of the injection needle, um, read the gauge so that says 25 G, so that's 25 gauge. And this is a 5 8 inch needle. So that's what the 5 8 and then underneath it has it in millimeters and um, uh, in millimeters, obviously not in centimeters. Um, it's too small. So um, you always read those to know um, what you're dealing with. I'm going to back up to that, that blunt fill. Like I said, that, that's an 18 gauge. That's, that's massive um, gauge wise. Um, and also just in its name, it's a blunt fill. So this is a fairly blunt needle because all it's used for is drawing up medications. You would never ever inject a person with a blunt fill. So the next thing we're going to look at is that ampule again. So we'll talk about and sort of demonstrate drawing out of an ampule. So when you do uh, take medication or liquid from an ampule, you'll sometimes notice when you take it out of its package um, or drawer that you'll have fluid sort of in that top portion. Um, and we don't want that because that is gonna throw off what's in this. What ends up happening with an ampule is we crack off the top um, and we draw medication out of here. So you can imagine now if there's fluid at that top part, we've lost that fluid when we crack it and we may be short in what we take out from our ampule. So a couple methods to get rid of that fluid, pretty simple. One is a flicking method and you can see it just sort of falls down the fluid. The other method, I'll just refill it, is sort of a, a spin or a twist. So you just kind of do a... So when you're opening an ampule, you want to take care because it is glass. Um, so there's a couple of things to, to note with it. Um, you're going to crack it away from you um, and away from other people. You're going to want to protect your finger. So how that's most typically done um, within the WRTA is with an alcohol swab as a pad. Um, textbooks also outline using a 2x2 two two gauze pad to do that um, and also there are some facilities do actually provide an ampule cover so it's just kind of a plastic a hard plastic sleeve that goes over um, that protects you when you're cracking it. Those are a little less common because it's um, one use and then it gets thrown out so um, for cost purposes the alcohol swab I would say is the most common. So um, when we're going to crack this, when we're ready, we have no fluid in here, um, we're gonna fold the alcohol swab over it um, almost completely. And I like to do it in sort of a diamond method um, like this and turn it, make sure you're, again, you're protected. Um, you also kind of need to visualize or imagine through the alcohol swab, putting your thumb right on that crack line. And there usually is a crack line like this. So this blue line is the crack line, if you will. Um, or uh, you may also see a dot. And you can feel through the alcohol swab even that indent, so that crack line. And you're gonna make sure it's really stable and again, away from you and from others. And you're just gonna do that gentle cracking motion away. Um, and then the top is cracked off. So this will go into our yellow sharps container as well. Um, we're just sort of 
putting them aside for now, but that will go definitely into your yellow sharps container or um, the larger yellow sharps container on award. Um, so now we have an open ampule. Uh, I'm talking lots. You would want to be doing this all pretty efficiently. So to, again, prevent contamination of the contents of your ampule, um, but just we'll, we'll take it slow for, for demo purposes. Um, so now I'm going to demonstrate drawing out of an ampule. Um, I'm going to just demonstrate it with a 1 ml slip tip syringe just so you get that different, that different perspective than a, a, the lure lock syringe that we did already. So if we use um, this slip tip, it's only a 1 ml, so we'll say we're drawing up um, 0.5 out of this um, ampule. Same principles, right? When we're opening our syringe, we want to not touch that tip. Um, and we're going to use a blunt fill as well. Um, for the ampule, but ampules are special, again, because they are glass, we are actually going to use this um, blunt fill filter needle. Um, and you'll want to, again, read the, the back side of the label because it specifically says blunt fill filter needle. Um, again, it is an 18 gauge, it's a very large needle. Um, on the colored side of it, they are red capped as well for sort of um, flagging purposes. They also have this purple um, hub to them and that's just to show the difference. Um, it's also the filter mechanism is in that hub So it looks a little bit different than our regular blunt fill to remove any or filter out any Potential glass shards that happened when we cracked it. Um, so We will open our Blunt fill filter. We will remove our syringe now for a slip tip I don't I don't particularly love these and I think in general um, They're moving away from using slip tips for injection, but you may still see it So it's good to just sort of review um, But when uh, you have the option I would say choose a needle that you can lure lock on so that will just go in the garbage there. Um, so with the slip tip, it's just a pressure of pushing it on. So you can probably imagine, wow, that's definitely not gonna be as secure when you pull your, your um, needle cap off, um, that it's not maybe as locked in there. So if you haven't pushed it on securely enough, you'll find when you take off your cap, the whole needle comes off, and you kinda wanna start again then with that. So we're going to go ahead um, with the blunt fill filter and we're going to draw up 0.5 mLs from our ampule. So with an ampule, you can just go ahead and insert. Um, and what's kind of cool about them is because of surface tension, you can actually flip that upside down right away and start drawing out. You'll also note with the ampule, I did not inject air into it beforehand. It doesn't have that same vacuum system as the vial does, so don't inject air. If you did inadvertently inject some air, um, not the end of the world, but that does usually blow your surface tension and then you can't hold it upside down. So same principles as the, the syringe um, before. We're going to try to knock out this air. Final uh, couple things I just want to show you of uh, what's in your kit um, have to do with, um, so we, we went over blunt fills and I think that that is a pretty intuitive concept that you wanna use a blunt fill either to not blunt your injection needle um, or to prevent um, glass shards from entering your syringe. There are some um, exceptions to that rule. So when we get into drawing up insulin, for example, this is an insulin syringe. It says right on there, insulin syringe. It's a vanish point, which is a brand name, but it's also a safety activated um, device. Um, it's a one ml syringe or one cc, it says it here. But again, it's insulin. So it also says underneath there, U100. So that's referring to its calibration to a specific type of insulin. So you would only want to use this syringe with insulin. This is the syringe that you use for insulin and insulin alone. You don't try to draw up other things with this syringe and you also don't try to draw up insulin any different type of syringe. So this is solely for insulin um, and it's calibrated to the, the primary type of insulin that we use um, here within the WHA. Um, and Generally, it's the most common type of insulin is U100, and U100 refers to in one ml of um, insulin, there's 100 units. So you'd, you'll see that on your insulin vial as well. So this, these number markings or graduated markings on your syringe are not mLs, they are in units. And I just wanna be very, very clear about that. So when you do get insulin orders for your resident or your patient, it will come in units. It will say, for example, 20 units of Lispro insulin um, with meals. So you'll want to draw up 20 units. So you'll wanna draw up to the 20 there. Um, 
it's not mls it's not a calculation that needs to be done it's just in units on this unit syringe so it does have a 1 ml marking at the bottom just to let you know that in 100 units there is or sorry in 1 ml there is 100 units of insulin but you can probably imagine why you don't want to um, screw that up or mix that up with an ml syringe so the other um, special and neat thing about this um, injection needle is that it comes with the needle the injection needle pre-attached so for insulin um, or for pre-attached needles to syringes, we don't have that option of using a blunt fill or an alternate needle to draw up our medication. So you would actually insert this needle into your insulin vial. Um, so yes, you're right, that does blunt it just a little bit, um, but it's um, a nice, sharp, and um, small needle especially for insulin injection and this is just how they come so you, you don't really have that option. So what you will want to do is look at the gauge and um, the gauge and length of this um, pre-attached needle. So it's a 29 gauge and a one half inch which when we start to talk about subcut injections a little more in detail you'll know that this is an acceptable um, needle size to use for a subcut injection which insulin is. So that's sort of that. Um, another important thing to note, and again, we'll talk about it again in that subcut, um, is with the vanish point, you actually need to, when you inject it um, and stabilize, you're actually gonna wanna activate that vanish point, which is the safety, um, it sucks the injection needle into the barrel um, as a safety measure so that you don't poke yourself when you remove it. Um, that actually needs to be depressed all the way in the patient to deliver all of the insulin. And we'll get to that again a little bit later and I'll show you the activation of the device. And I'll just show you the safety mechanism on these types of needles um, or injection needles uh, that are not pre-attached. I'll just activate this one. So if we had injected all of our medication into the patient and now we this was empty and we wanted to activate it, you can push up with this with your thumb um, to activate it, another advisable method of doing that is just putting it on a, a flat, firm surface and pulling down. Um, but I'll do it with my thumb just so that you can see it really clearly, what ends up happening. Um, this is the safety engineered system, covers the needle tip and it can't then um, poke you through there. This would still go in the sharp. Um, on that note, an ampule is always just a single use. You're just going to use it for what you need it for, for that specific patient purpose, and then it's the remainder of it is going to go into the Sharps container, um, whereas vials can actually be multi-use.